that every generation thinks they invented sex and uh, they can't conceive that uh, all those old people and the grandparents and the great-grandparents ever were into sex. So in a, a similar fashion, there is something going on in technology. We all think that the technology that's new to us is bigger and more transformational than all the technology that happened before. And we can't really make the judgment objectively because we know what we are struggling with and we don't know what another generation struggled with and how much impact it had to it. But uh, the concept of making a transatlantic phone call uh, some number of decades ago had to have had at least as big an impact on the people as sending an email message today or accessing a web page. So I kind of look at technology as a river and there are rapids in the river and there are slower parts in the river, but the, the river just keeps going down and technology keeps flowing and some parts of technology come at you faster, but then they'll slow down again. And this is a faster period, but I wouldn't characterize it as being a historically fastest because I didn't live the other period of time and I don't think we've our generation has invented technology. The question of gut feeling versus analysis is framed wrong. These are not independent. Gut feel that does not rely on analysis as a sanity check, as a verification, is likely to be very arbitrary and very likely to be wrong. Analysis that is not answering questions that are raised by somebody's intuitive judgment that's based on thousands of exposures to individuals' thoughts and observations is a sterile analysis. So the best of these things is a synergy between intuition, and intuition is not arbitrary. Intuition is a summation of many, many experiences in the first place. But anyway, synergy between intuition and analysis and that synergy is better than either intuition or analysis. Uh, if you look at various regions of the United States and, and adjust the time when you look at them, different cities, uh, different regions of the country have developed a cauldron of creativity pertaining to a particular industry that was almost impossible to imitate a replicate elsewhere. Hollywood is one example. Uh, you know, for 60, 70, 80 years, the, to this day, uh, through technology change, through commerce change, to world wars and everything, the trend-setting movie production of the world comes from an area like Silicon Valley that's in Hollywood. Detroit is another example for automobiles. Uh, New York is another example for financial activities. It is very difficult for anybody to be in the investment banking business and not be in New York or in the car business in the United States and not be in Detroit and so on. Silicon Valley is just one more of the same kind. It's very difficult to be in the evolving information technology field without having a presence in Silicon Valley and being immersed in the influences that you get out of having the proximity of all the infrastructure of uh, technologies, companies, venture capitalists, uh, various groupings of professional societies, law firms and the like. So it is similar to other centers like this, uh, it just per unique in high technology. Well, not personal friends, but kind of business friends. Steve Jobs and I are reasonably good personal friends, but the rest of us, are, by and large, know each other for, for, through business. I'm very impressed with Steve Jobs, too. Uh, he's been one of the creative minds in this last 15, 20-year period of time, uh, consistently. Though.